Hiya, and welcome back to the channel. Happy Sunday fun day, it's Leo season. Hope you're having a fantastic Leo season so far. This video is a request video from Noel Green. So thank you, Noel, for this request. Uh, you did make it a wee while ago, but I have, <laughs> I've got a long list of videos and request videos, and I'm slowly making my way through that list. So if you have requested a video and you're still waiting, it should be on my list. If not, uh, like if it's been like two months <laughs> and I still haven't made your video, um, just remind me, okay? And I will respond as soon as possible. And the question was about the specific placement of Pluto in the first house for Sagittarius rising. Uh, or it's not only for Sagittarius risings, but those who have Pluto in the first house as well as Sagittarius. Just in a nutshell then, Noel and others watching this, um, let's talk about what is Pluto. Pluto is this planet or this archetype of manipulation, of power, of transformation. And then we can also look at what is Sagittarius. So extremely briefly again, Sagittarius is the mutable fire sign that is to do a lot with knowledge, a lot to do with um, optimism, and a lot to do with travel. And travel can be interpreted like literally physically, as well as in the metaphysical or in the figurative, spiritual, it's both or all of those senses. And then also what is the rising or first house? Extremely briefly again, uh, I've made a couple of videos actually on the houses specifically, so you can check those out if you are interested. And also I did a video on Sagittarius rising already, so you can check that out. The rising sign is your personal perspective or your world view. It is your aura, it is your personality. Okay, so if you have this placement, Pluto in Sagittarius, in the first house, so your Sagittarius rising or ascendant also, rising and ascendant just mean the same thing, darling. Um, then one of the points I wrote down for this is that you are most likely going to be positively punishing and the kind of person who really will throw a punch. It's not like... Pluto rising or Pluto in the first house on its own in isolation. I did a video on that by the way, but Pluto in the first house generally is just someone who has this kind of aura that could be let's say creepy or that could be let's say it seems that they that they are very transformative or it seems that they have a great um, awareness of manipulation and all the rest of it. No, Pluto in the first house in Sagittarius is like not only do they know that but they're much more likely, because this is fire now, they're much more likely to act on it, because fire as an element, very generally, in astrology, is about action as well, and putting out and demonstrating. We're in Leo season, for fuck's sake. It's about show, entertainment. I was just singing along to Christina Aguilera a moment ago, having a good old catch up with her this weekend. But it's like performance, entertainment, in the in the Leo season sense, uh, and Sagittarius also being a fire sign. It's about um, putting out, uh, shooting out, often in the form of questions and kind of often dumb um, curiosity, um, which can offend quite a lot, but it's really just curiosity, but it's like, it's the kind of curiosity that comes out before having thought about the effect. Again, it's the fire plus Sagittarian energy, which is curious and wants to ask and cross boundaries. Anyway, yeah, so positively punishing or a really, someone who really will throw a punch, babe. Um, also, someone with this placement quite likely is the shoot first, ask questions later. And I'm gonna get onto like a really kind of serious uh, topic towards the end of the video, which I noticed when I was researching Pluto in the first house in Sagittarius rising. But anyway, more generally, more abstractly as well, could be a kind of shoot first, ask questions later type of person when you have Pluto in Sagittarius in the first house. Also, this can give you a scrappy or, um, s yeah, a scra it can make you scrappy basically or give you a scrappy kind of aura, a sort of scrappy dappy do um, <laughs> sort of aura. Also, with this aura, 
you know, let's say you are Scorpio rising and you have Pluto in the first house. This is going to make you extremely sinister uh, seeming. Again, it's first house stuff. So you may well not be like this at all deep down. Your thoughts, your feelings, your reactions may not be like this at all. But first house stuff is kind of how you're appearing. And it's also your worldview. Let's say you're Scorpio rising then you're going to appear particularly sinister or mysterious somehow or fearful. Um, but having Sagittarius here along with Pluto, it's not quite sinister, not quite mysterious. It's more like an aura that makes you look positively set to strike. So in some cases it can appear more scary to others because um, it's, yeah, again, you're just positive about striking. You're positive about striking if need be. Also, one thing I wanted to talk about is my experience during moon in Sagittarius transits. So what I've noticed when the moon is in Sagittarius, and again, the moon only spends, uh, it spends less than two days, uh, sorry, less than three days in each sign. So it's a very fast moving planet, the moon. Um, but what I've noticed is people on the streets just out and about are much more willing to lash out are much more willing to do like stupid things when provoked much more uh willing to just um yeah it, it, it just do it and i've had and especially it comes in the form of like shooting things or throwing things or spitting and i've had experiences unfortunately of that during these transits it can make people um whatever the thought or feeling with Sagittarius and Jupiter we talk about expansion and we talk about make it massive make it big and so good bad or ugly it's going to be expanded on it's going to be um and also with Sagittarian energy people are going to want to teach someone something with that action so they're just going to be full of the bravado and the expansion so again this sense then of striking striking out when you have this um placement also the deadly soldier so sagittarius is already the soldier sort of archetype um i mean i mean we forget actually about the glyph i think it was Alyssa trahan formerly Alyssa sharp who once pointed this out in one of her videos when I first got into astrology and she talked about how the glyph for Sagittarius is the only weapon in the zodiac. All the other glyphs are like, well, mainly, or all the other constellations are kind of um, humans, like virgins, twins, uh, or animals, or just a set of scales. <laughs> like, But Sagittarius is the only one that actually has a weapon. and. We often forget not only that, but that Sagittarius is also a yang sign. It's one of the yang signs. So all the signs go yin yang, yin yang, yin yang, yin yang, uh, six times. <laughs> and Sagittarius is a yang sign. And so we forget with yang, it's like these people are much more likely to put out, are much more likely to express, are much more likely to create something that is seen, displayed, that is. Um, actually felt and uh, yeah and, I, and again the sense of weaponry again so the bow and arrow in many cases or in contemporary contexts the gun and let's talk also very briefly about the united states the united states has a sagittarius rising um has a sagittarius rising places spaces also have an astrology and the astrology of the united states is sagittarius rising and so <laughs> You don't need to be an astrologer to figure out the, the the correlation there. The not only the massive amount of gun crime and but also the the very kind of Sagittarian lax attitude towards guns and the kind of this almost optimism about these things. Being willing to strike out or shoot out when uh, affronted is much more strong in a place like the United States which has a Sagittarius rising astrology. Next point I wanted to talk about is intense convictions. So if you have this placement you're gonna have very intense conviction. The intensity is actually coming from Pluto and the conviction from the Sagittarius constellation that you have in the first house. So not only or most Sagittarius rising people you will find have a lot of convictions and they're very moralistic and they can tend to be 
frankly preachy um, and massage resin so I can say that but like we can become quite preachy but with Pluto here you're going to be intensely um, convinced about things it's going to be much more intense also transformational and philosophical world views the Sagittarian world view the Sagittarius in the first house or Sagittarius rising world view um, um, is already philosophical is already it's already got that um, um, kind of Jupiterian let's look into the sky let's sort of um, talk about big broad topics like religion and culture and language and and ask questions about life like what are we here for what is life you know and say all these kind of motto -y things like life is a journey it's not about the destination and all these kind of things right Pluto being here makes all of that transformational as well actually transforming the self and or others transforming the situation transforming the place putting all that philosophy and that philosophical worldview into some kind of transformational action or even if not there's just some some sense of it being transformational. Um, and one example I found um, of a person who had um, Sagittarius rising was this guy called Alexander Hamilton, who is significant in American history. I hope I'm right about that. <laughs> I have no idea who, who he was before researching, but Alexander Hamilton, important, I think, in terms of like pushing uh, forward laws and Sagittarius let's not forget is the archetype of laws morals and um, publication as well so actually putting things out there or um, more to the point more specifically propagation proselytizing in the tarot just quickly in the tarot you have for example the son of wands which is a sort of representation of in, in the deck that I use of like a young sort of um, eager, keen, optimistic snake that also has a wand. So not, not only here do we have this um, representation of Scorpio Pluto in the snake, and also if you are Chinese, astrological sign is a snake, you may well have a lot of Scorpio placements or you may well resonate um, equally with Scorpio and snake sort of archetypes. But anyway, um, we have here the Son of Wands being, I think, a good representation of Pluto in Sagittarius in the first house. It is the snake that is aware of all these realities and all the kind of um, ugly truths of the world, but also the wand is there and the wand being fire in the tarot. It's about putting out again, manifesting. I'll actually manifest this bite or I'll actually, and the bite could be good, bad or ugly, right? You know, give it some bite, give it some zest, give it something, right? You have the Sagittarian energy as well coming in, which is gonna make you actually willing to uh, act on, strike again. Um, in the Tarot, we also have the major arcana card, Temperance, and this is a very, um, it, it's very often interpreted as a Sagittarius card. I like to interpret it as that as well. And in the deck that I use, you have um, tears or water coming onto the fire. And again, this speaks to the need with Sagittarius Risings in general, I'll say, uh, the need to... Uh, and, and anywhere that you have Sagittarius, anywhere... Or if you have lots of planets in the ninth house, let's say, or in a mutable house, just really generally, this is where you have to <laughs> practice a lot of temperance because mutable energy um, is the fluctuating energy. It is the energy that is constantly changing. Um, or, or f being flaky or fluctuating or being sporadic and, and spread thin a lot of the time and so the temperance card does represent I think um, perhaps also specifically to Pluto in the first house in Sagittarius but definitely for Sagittarius in the first house we have this need to temper the worldview so that you don't too often fire those arrows don't too often um, proselytize, propagate to the extent that you get uh, yourself killed or yourself in big trouble. So it's temperance, fire meeting the water necessarily. Also, this is going to make you a positively loyal person. So the positivity, optimism coming from that Sagittarius constellation and then the loyalty coming from Pluto. Pluto, the Scorpio archetypes being very much about true, real bonds that are also deep and, um, and yeah, positively loyal kind of person with this placement or at least your worldview is about things and people the world should be positive about loyalty and should stick 
optimistically to the things and people that they are loyal to. With Scorpio behind you, you're also aware of the power of manipulating and the power of control and, and sort of um, the power games that can play out politically, let's say, or the power, ga power games that can play out psychologically. You're aware of this very keenly, very innately, or at least your worldview. Um, very much contains that but it's still like you're sort of like this prince because a prince or princess sort of archetype is still like a mutable sign like mutable energy like a younger snake it's still um willing to both um have a strike but also it gets really tired easily it gets um uh, it can still get afraid it can still pull back it's like you're at the gate of capricorn there's not quite the hundred percent cardinal commitment there's still the fluctuation power and violence especially being associated with pluto and scorpio the way you view the world is okay you're at the foot of this mountain but you just experienced the lake having been drained so you're aware of all these snakes and everything else but it's not about for you uh remaining you cannot remain in that lake in the water and also um you're now with you're familiar with the snakes if that makes sense um but at the same time, you, uh, you you can see already the mountain. You're already born seeing the mountain. And so you're aware of the need to um, actually put effort into things, actually make things tangible. And this is where we go back to the actual striking, the actual shooting out of things. Because where you're, you are uh, always, Sagittarius Rising in general is always... Uh, trying to get to Capricorn is always um, striving to make things uh, stable, tangible, strong. This is kind of where you are um, spiritually, astrologically. This is kind of where you're placed. But the Pluto being there is um, just making you so, 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 more than Sagittarius rising on its own, it's making you so, so, so keenly aware of those serpents and what they can do and the potency of them. Whereas a Sagittarius rising in general, person may not be aware and may get bitten far more times and may be far stupider than you, <laughs> okay? Also, the world is big and deep. This is something that you are keenly aware of, how the world is not just big, this is a Sagittarian, Sagittarius rising outlook, but also deep, this is the Pluto, aware of the depths of the world. And another point is that you are probably the real debt collectors. This is the outgoing nature, plus debt, plus um, reality. Debt, that which is associated with bonds and contracts, and then reality as well. Both of these things being kind of Scorpionic, Plutonian, um, but with this being in, in Sagittarius in the first house, the way you view things is if someone or something owes me something, or if I owe someone or something something, um, then I've got to collect, I've got to deliver. And the well, I often talk in my videos about the well, which is basically the eighth house. Scorpio is the landlord of the eighth house, and this is where we go down um, to sit with ourselves, to look ourselves in the mirror properly in the dark. Um, with like a candle and it's kind of all about the psyche and looking at our deepest fears and insecurities and all that jazz. For you, this well is behind you but not forgotten. Again, it's like this lake drained of all the water and the snakes and the serpents remain or they've died out or they, they've all kind of clambered elsewhere. I guess these are like water snakes. They've clambered elsewhere, okay? It's behind you, or the water's all gone, it's all drained, but you haven't forgotten. And this is something that Sagittarius Risings generally can easily forget, because they want to put Scorpio behind them. Scorpio is behind them in their 12th house, but not for you guys, necessarily. It doesn't, or it doesn't look like that, or your personality, your aura doesn't come across like that. It's very keenly aware, or seemingly uh, keenly aware of that well that is now behind you. Some things that I researched, one thing was, let me just have a little drink of coffee. I hope you're drinking something as well. Some rosé maybe, I feel like rosé is a nice Leo season drink. Or if you don't drink alcohol, maybe a nice uh, fresh um, sort of mocktail Long Island, that would be nice, iced tea. If you are interested, some other individuals who have this placement Sagittarius Rising with Pluto in the first house as well 
are uh, Christiane or Christiana von Goethe. Also, in terms of events, the execution of Saddam Hussein was um, a Sagittarius rising Pluto in the first house event. Also, the independence of Montenegro. Also, the Islamic State has this astrology. Saint Faith has this astrology as well. Now, last, um, the last thing I wanted to talk about, which I was like really astonished by when doing the research, was the amount of gun killings, the amount of um, mainly gun killings, um, shootings, mass shootings that happen around this particular astrological um, energy of Sagittarius rising and with Pluto in the first house, or Pluto and Sagittarius rising, if you like. Um, we have the uh, Isla Vista killings in 2014, Westgate shopping mall shooting in 2013 in um, Kenya, the Thales attack in 2015, and the June 2017 London attacks were also Sagittarius rising, Pluto rising, and then the 2017 Manchester um, bombing, which we uh, might remember, um, which happened at the Ariana Grande performance. Uh, I mean, you can already feel a particular, um, you can already feel a particular energy when the moon is in Sagittarius. But when, but when we have Sagittarius rising and Pluto rising at certain times in certain places, this can be huge. It can be huge, it can be Jupiterian, it can expand power to destroy. And again, it's always about, I think when you have this placement, it's always about um, being um, positively ready, optimistically ready to punch, to throw a punch, to strike if you are attacked. It's not simply a Scorpio rising placement or simply a Pluto rising placement, which may be so sensitive to realities that they, they are always or mostly scurrying away or always or mostly able to evade. With this in being in Sagittarius, it's like you're still putting yourself way out there into the world, you're still in the open and you're kind of not only aware of these realities but you're kind of like really not giving a fuck and, and, and ready, willing again to teach, because teach is a key word with Sagittarius, to teach someone um, that they cannot fuck with uh, you personally, because we're talking about the, the rising sign and the first house. Um, so this could be, there was, some lot, lot, there was a lot of like ugly, <laughs> bad things here, but it can also be for the good and the great as well, for like godly protection of yourself, godly protection of others, godly protection of your morals, your worldview. Pluto is there giving you the, again, that keen awareness of all these manipulations an insight on realities as well as Sagittarius giving you all the optimism to just put yourself out there to shoot out there to um, I guess it's the marriage of the eighth and the ninth houses it's it's being um, it's being on top of staying on top of I guess your um, well <laughs> you're you're on top of the well it's like I've been down there don't make me um, show you basically <laughs> I've been down there long enough don't make me show you because i i actually can <laughs> um okay that's the video that i wanted to make in response for you noel green and other people with this placement thank you very much um, for the request and i'll see you in the next video my love bye bye have a lovely sunday fun day and see you all next time take care